Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, oh man, got a radio show. Yeah, I do. God's so big to me, man. I just have to tell you about it. I can't help it. It's rather obvious to me how big, how good God is. He's absolutely tremendous. He's off the chain. He on one. He be clowning. He be just showing out. Man, I'm just over here just on the receiving end. You know, uh, if you're out there, start your mission today. Start your mission today. What are you waiting for? Why do we as people delay what we want or delay the process to begin what we want? our hopes, our dreams, our desires. Why won't you start your mission today? Why don't we all decide together that just individually, look, you listening, you got something that you've been dreaming about. You got an ambition of yours that's not yet fulfilled. You got goals you haven't accomplished yet. Everybody has them. Everybody's got them. Everybody's got something that's that's on the table that they haven't yet attacked yet. What are you waiting for? Start your mission today. Stop the procrastination now. The procrastination is only hurting you, yourself. If you got a goal, an aspiration, a dream, and you fall off track momentarily, you can get back to that. Because God know where you left off. Now, you may have to accomplish a few more things since you stopped for a long period of time, but God know where you left off. You can get back on track. I Look, man, this dream of being on TV since I was a kid, it got off track now. It got off track. I just kept it as one of the dreams. And in some real dark moments when it looked like it wasn't going to happen, all I was hanging on to was just the hope that one day it could. But that's what faith is really about. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. But faith gives you the confidence to keep hoping, man. Sometimes it just keep hope alive. Sometimes, you heard Jesse Jackson say it, just keep hope alive. Sometimes, man, it's just the hope. I was hanging on the hope. And I'm talking about when it got real ugly and funky out there for me. When it looked like I wasn't going to ever make it. And all of the facts was in and everything pointed in the direction. You're not going to make it. You done really messed up this time. Then I sat there and I just hung on to the hope. 
But man, that's what I'm saying. If you got a dream or an aspiration or vision or something, when you fall off track and you want to go get back in line, God holds your place. See, he held on to that for me. He knew I was off track and out of line, but he said, okay, here's where we stop. You want to be on TV. Now, when you get it together and you quit tripping and you come and you turn to me, I'm going to hold your place, put you back in line, then we go and finish the journey. That took me a lot longer to get here than I wanted to, but then it was necessary because I needed all of them mishaps to happen to me along the way. So when I got on the radio one day, which I did not see coming, Steve Harvey got a radio show, y'all. That's why I say it every day. See, because of this radio show that I didn't see coming, now I have stories to tell. I got experiences to share. And I can tell you about me better than I can tell you about anybody. And I done been through enough where it's relatable, where enough people can go, man, that happened to me. Appreciate you saying that. That's what it was for. See, I get it now. See, at the time, though, I didn't, I didn't like what was happening to me. At the time, I was really in total disagreement with God on a lot of stuff he was pulling off on me. But in essence, I was really pulling it off on myself. But through his grace and mercy, he kept me through all of my mistakes, all my bad decisions, all my miscalculations, all my misfires, all the times I knowingly stepped out there and did wrong. He forgave me. He said, because, man, if you ever come to me, I have a plan for you that is going to be far and above. It will supersede everything you've ever dreamed of. That's what I did. I just got sick of me good and sick of me and I turned it over to God and then God started working and here I am today now is he through with me yet nope have I arrived yet nope but guess what the journey is cool you know it's like I was talking to this young brother the other day about comedy he's a really good stand-up you know this young dude is really good He said, man, what is this I feel every night before I go on stage? I don't know what it is. I just want it off me. I said, sir, listen to me, young young dude. This thing that climbs on my back every night before I go on stage, I don't know what it is. It's got something to do with pressure. It's got something to do with anticipation. It's got a whole lot to do with the fear of falling. He said, what you mean by that? I said, every night I walk out on stage, it's like I'm about to go and step off a cliff. I said, it's a sickening feeling. He said, man, but you do so well. I said, that's because the parachute opens. I said, but I want you to understand something. When I first walk out there, it's just stepping off the cliff. Now, these jokes provide a parachute, which slows my descent when I jump off the cliff. And I turn it into a glide. And then I take the audience this way and I swing them back over to that way. We might swing out to the Colorado Rockies. We may go down to Miami with this joke. We may take it on out to L.A. And I just swing back and forth till I land softly. The crowd cheers. The night is over with. I said, but it's been too many nights, though, when I walked off that cliff and I pulled the cord and the parachute didn't open. I said, now I'm just free falling out there for 30 minutes. Ain't no jokes working. Ain't the parachute didn't open. I said, so see, that's what it's like for me. And then you know what I found out? If you done walked off the cliff in life and you ain't got no God in your life, it's like not having a parachute. You step off the cliff and you just free falling. Now see, we all, now that fall gets you closer to the grave, right? See, we all heading to the grave from the moment we're born. But the cool thing about a relationship with God is, when you step off the cliff and you got God, he a parachute. You still going down, but it's a nice ride. And God just helps your, your descent appear more like a rise and more like a euphoric fall instead of not having no God in your life. And you just walking off that cliff every day, free falling, ain't got no cord. You steady pulling. Ah, you hollering the whole way because you messed around with yourself and ain't let God come into your life and provide a parachute for you. I would rather have a parachute since I got to jump every day than to not have one. God has been like a parachute for me. Ask me why I, where that came from. I can't tell you, but like I always say, most good things that happen in my life that I can't explain, it's usually him. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. The Steve Harvey Morning Show is live again. Good morning, everybody. Uh, get ready and prepare yourself uh, to have a blessed day. Uh, live your life today in expectation that God is going to do something for you today, as he already has, seeing as how you've awakened. Okay, so now that that is accomplished, that's a great big thank you, Lord, right there. So now let's just expect him to do some other things for us. Live your life in expectation and in watchful anticipation of what that God we serve can do for you. That's how I live my life. I suggest you try that. It's a wonderful way to live because something usually always happens when you proclaim it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is ah, Steve Harvey Morning Show. Make no mistake about it. Huh? Huh? You know what I'm talking about. Shirley Strawberry. Hey, good morning, Steve. <laughs> I feel like it today, yeah. too. Carla Pharrell. You sounding good. What's up, boss? Man, hey, pimping ain't easy, but somebody yes, got sir. to do it. <laughs> Speaking of pimping, here's the voice that could have been a pimp, ladies and gentlemen, Junior. Morning, uh. Yeah, your it's voice back. is back. You yeah. strong now. <laughs> got some rest. Been resting. Junior. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tommy Tom. Big doggy dog in the building, yo, baby. Yo. Yes, uh, folks, we often had this conversation <laughs> off air on this morning show. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah we did. Because uh, 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 according to Tommy mm-hmm. and a couple other morning show people that I won't mention, mm-hmm. uh, have oftentimes questioned the route that I took to have the achievements that I have based on the limited <laughs> limited tech skills and uh, actual grasp of the English language. Technology. And spelling. Mm-hmm. So lack of grasp of the English language, spelling, and tech savviness has caused them to doubt and question mm. how I got here. Maybe it was so, a mistake. Yeah. 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 It's just a it's it's just a, you know, it's the amazing. eighth wonder of the world. <laughs> like, that's basically just like it. that. Just like that, Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> Cause like, okay, I, I tell you I tell you what started. One day, you know how you be writing and you be texting and you get stuck on a little simple word. The word was <laughs> yeah. was. Was yeah. I and don't I, tell nobody this, Steve. Don't tell nobody no, this. No, that was cool. And I just said, hey, man, <laughs> no, just we was off the air on commercial break. <laughs> and I said, hey, man, how you spell was? Ooh, <laughs> three letters. And, you know, the, 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 that little reaction from the peanut gallery was a... Ooh, ooh. Ooh, we lost. So letters. Tommy said, what route did you take? How the hell you make it? <laughs> we sitting up here, here. He a leader, and he can't spell words. Three letters. Remember the other word you couldn't spell? You asked. What was the other one? Ma'am. Uh-huh. Remember that? One? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I still struggle with that. Ma'am is kind of tricky, though. You gotta admit. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, we, we come back. I'm going to tell you how I did it if you want to. All right. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Christmas is fast approaching. We all know that. Mm-hmm. Time to get the toys together. However, the elves, I didn't know this. Yeah. The elves are on strike. And uh, you guys are I, uh, here with some grievances. Uh, what, yeah, what's going I got on, guys? This. I got this. I'm going to handle this with mm. myself mm-hmm. because it's something that I'm. I'm good at doing because I'm a former union man. And <laughs> okay. Elves, uh, okay. elves have decided. They came to me with a lot of complaints, and I'm being their representative now. We wanted Tommy to stand up for him, but then <laughs> he was, all, he he was already standing up. Yeah, we didn't even notice. So <laughs> See, right there. Right they there. went, well, I'll be damned. We need it. somebody to stand up for us that look like they actually standing. So I said I would do it. The elves uh, this year are uh, going on strike. Well, they haven't gone on yet, but they're threatening to go on strike. The elves are wanting to sit out this year. Santa Claus is having trouble because he's trying to talk to these damn elves about their concern. (laughs) So I'm here with their grievances. And I want to start by saying these are the elves' grievances, and I will be preparing these statements on behalf of the Elf Foundation. We need it. We, the elves, who work at the North Pole, are requesting the following changes 
Please show your support through our website, www.helpelves.com. <laughs> if you want to help the elves, helpelves.com. Tommy, don't act like you don't know. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, y'all go. We, these are team. the complaints that the elves have, and here we go. Number one problem that they're having. We the elves mm-hmm. would like to uh-huh. stop making these damn wooden toys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't no kid want no damn wooden toy. And we've been making them for years. He sure has. Okay. okay. Ain't nobody asked for sure. now one of these wooden wheels, these wooden pegs, these Not a wooden one. blocks. Uh-huh. They got real toys now. Secondly, we the elves are requesting to have a casual Friday. <laughs> so ain't, we ain't got to wear these stupid ass uniforms. <laughs> Curled up Damn tight ass pants with these pointed hats. We want a casual Friday. I'm voicing the concerns that elves have and they're considered on going on strike. And they wanted me to convey this to Santa Claus and everybody. Listen. We the elves uh-huh. would like to request a 30 minute smoke break. <laughs> they smoke. Yes, we smoke. <laughs> And that. we want to be able to go outside and smoke whatever we want. <laughs> as long as it's legal. You try making these wooden toys without it. Hells don't get high. Hey. Hey. Here's the next complaint on behalf of the Hells. Elves. We the Elves have voted to eliminate Bring Your Kids to Work Day. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the matter is, elves really don't like kids. We really don't. Really? No, we don't. Damn that. Because they think we kids too just because we short. Get your damn hands off of me. <laughs> Stupid ass. I drove here in a sleigh. <laughs> Next complaint that they have, we the elves are uncomfortable wearing these god dang pointy toe shoes that hurt our feet. He did good. We want Crocs to be the new official elf shoe. (laughs) (laughs) Crocs and gators to be the new elf shoe. Do the, do the I'm elves? Doing, I'm doing complaints. You don't act like you ain't with them. What? <laughs> like, are you trying to add a complaint? I'm don't not act like, like you ain't. I just want to ask: Do, do you elves and me? pilgrims have the same shoe? Is it the uh, same? Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm now, not an elf or a pilgrim. Quit. Well, let's quit playing this game. <laughs> do they? <laughs> Next complaint: We the elves. Do not like elf shirts and pants. They ain't got no damn pockets. <laughs> and we want to start using fanny packs. <laughs> They're back in oh, they style. <laughs> so when we go outside to take our smoke break, we'll have our stuff with us. <laughs> uh, Next complaint. We the elves understand uh, that we on the North Pole, but some of the younger elves wants to cut back on the heat being so high all the time in the workshop. <laughs> the older elves is fine with that, but the young elves is going, damn, we sweat. <laughs> Old people. Uh, I love it. The heat. <laughs> Next, it's hot in here, huh? we the elves would like to assign 10 elves each year to ride around with Santa because we think it's unfair that we make all these damn toys and we don't ever get to go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> Fat ass just be packing up the sled with them reindeer. Damn it, we made the toys. Let us go. <laughs> oh, God. Couple more quickly. We the elves. We still love Miss Claus, and we know she's very nice, and she's never too busy to bend down and give us a hug. But we still <laughs> would like to know exactly what do she do up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she cooks. She cooks for everybody. <laughs> we ain't had time. nothing from her. Right. <laughs> we got a, a Keebler elf. And last but not least, we the elves support the Me Too movement. Oh, okay. That's real strong up okay, here. Okay, 
Okay. Yeah. And some of the female elves are requesting that Santa refrain from saying ho, 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 ho. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we're going to go, 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 go. <laughs> Nephew Tommy is up next with Run That Play. Well done, my man. Well we don't done. want right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, the nephew yeah. is here to run that prank back. What you got, Nev? Time for a pizza delivery. <laughs> now, everybody likes pizza, don't they? Yeah, who doesn't? But even people in prison like pizza. Let's go. Here it is. Pizza delivery. Pizza. May I help you? Hello, I'm trying to order pizza. Okay, can you hold for me, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. All right. Okay, sorry about that, sir. Can I take your order? Yeah, I need to order what? 10 pizzas. You want 10 pizzas? And what kind of crust was that going to be? I need six. Can you talk up for me, please? I need six cheese pizzas. Six? six cheese pizzas on thin crust. What kind of crust was that again? Thin, thin, thin. Thin, thin. six cheese, thin crust pizzas. And do you want any other toppings on that, sir? No, I need uh two two meat lovers. What was that again? Can you can you speak up a little bit? I was really having a hard time hearing you. I need two meat lovers. Two meat lovers, is that? Yes, two meat lovers. Two meat lovers pizza. Okay, and what kind of crust would you like on that, sir? Uh, that's thick, thick crust. You said you want a thin crust on that? Thick. So I'm having a really hard time hearing you. Can you speak up for me? I need I need two. Meat lovers with thick crust. Thick crust. Okay. Okay. All right. And then the last is two veggies on thin crust. Two veggies? Veggies. 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 Two veggies. Two veggies on the thick crust. Do, y- do y'all deliver to, um, do y'all deliver to, uh, um, uh, gated, gated community? Okay, can you hold for a second for me, please, sir? <sighs> okay. Sorry about that, sir. Okay. Can I get your phone number? Uh, Three four two dash six eight nine. Okay, I heard three four two dash six eight nine, but I didn't get the rest of those numbers. Can I get an area code or? No, my number three four two dash six eight nine. Okay, um, I need to get the whole seven digits and the area code so that we can put you in the computer to try to find your location. I told you my number. My number is three four two dash six eight nine. Okay, okay, sir. Um, let me get my manager on the phone. Excuse me, wait. Um, there's on the phone. Uh-huh. He's giving me like six numbers. I don't, maybe how can he do I'll, I'll take care of it. Sir, how are you doing? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. All right, I ordered ten pizzas, six cheese pizzas, two meat lovers, and two veggies. I'm trying to see if do y'all have a problem delivering to a gated community. Oh, not at all. We deliver to a gated community all the time. Let me just get a, a number for you and an address. Right. My number, 342-689. Sir, that's only six digits. We need seven digits. Well, actually, your error code plus your seven digits. Okay. I, I don't... I don't. If you just leave it with the guard, he'll make sure I get it. No, sir. I don't think you understand. I need to have a phone number where I can call you. We can go in and out of the gate. That's not a problem. When I get you, you there, I want to deliver directly to you. You can't go in and out that gate. Listen, you can't go in and out that gate. Sir, I'm I'm sorry I can't hear you. Can you speak up some? Okay. I'm trying to get 10 pizzas delivered, and you just drop it off with the guard. Sir, I understand what you're saying. I'm trying to deliver the pizza to you directly. The guard is not who's getting the pizza, right? I'm delivering it. Well, he gonna, he going he gonna to pay you. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with the guard. He going to pay you. Okay. Well, where, are you, where are you located? Let's do this. Where are you located? I'm in Angola. Angola? Angola. And where, is Ang- where is Angola? Angola. Y'all don't know where Angola I'm in Angola. Angola, Louisiana? The penitentiary. Huh? So we can't deliver pizza to Angola P- Penitentiary? Look, I ordered 10 pizzas from her. Six, six cheese pizzas, two meat lovers, and two veggies. Look, I can't be on this phone too much longer. Listen, sir, I, I, I know what you're saying, but we're not delivering to Angola. Do you know where we're located? you got to call somebody. We're in Dallas. Look, you got to call somebody in Angola, Louisiana. Look, I'm trying to get these 10 pizzas. Look, I'm, lady, I'm not finna go back and forth with you. Exactly, and I'm not going to go back and forth with you either. We are unable to deliver this pizza to you, okay? Why? Because you are in the penitentiary, sir. No one delivers pizza to people in the penitentiary. People in the penitentiary can't order pizza? 
No, sir, they cannot. We do not deliver to the penitentiary. And then we're in Dallas. Do you know how long it would take to get pizza to Angola? I don't give a d Let me think. Okay, who the manager there? I am the manager. You're speaking with the manager. What's your name? Never mind what my name is. Just know that I'm the manager. Okay, let me say this to you. Since you're the manager there, if I don't get no pizzas here tonight, I'm when I get out in three years, I'm coming down there and I'm going to you up. So who the f*** you think you're talking to? You ain't going to f*** me up. In three years, I won't be here. But matter of fact, I just might stay here for three years. So when you come back... Let me tell you something. If y'all don't bring these pieces to this penitentiary and get it to the guard before he get off work, then me, it's going to be some around here. Now, I didn't order these ten pizzas and everybody on the cell block is waiting on them. Sir, I don't, I don't care about you and your folk on your cell block. You are in the penitentiary, and I don't even know why you calling. Are you on my phone? This is a business, okay? And I have a job to do. I am not delivering pizzas to a penitentiary. So y'all discriminating about where y'all bring pizzas at? No, we don't discriminate, but we ain't located in Angola unless you're going to give me some petrol for my metro. I ain't coming. Let me tell you something. I want you to remember these numbers. 342-689. If you see that spray painted on your house or that damn pizza place, then you know my then got out and I'm looking for your 342-689. I don't give a about 342-689 and 743. What I'm saying is your is grass if you come up here in three years and guess what? Don't drop the soap. Who, who you think you talking to? That's what I said. Who you think you talking to? You better get off my phone. I got, I got one more thing to tell you before I get out in three years. These are the last words I'm going to say to you. Hey, what's that? You listening? Yeah, I'm listening. Say what you got to say. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your girlfriend got me to pray phone call you. Oh, my goodness. You got to be, you got to be freaking kidding me, man. Oh, my God. Oh, God. This is nephew Tommy. <laughs> Don't nobody want no prison piece? <laughs> Y'all want none, huh? Uh-uh. I'm good. All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right now, it is time for games you can't play. You can't play over the holidays. Jay, please explain. Okay. I, oh, here it is. Mm-hmm. What? I got it, I got it, I got it. <laughs> All right, here we go. The holidays are coming around, and, you know, we're going to have folks over to the house. Mm-hmm. So what I'm going to do is set up the game, tell a little bit about it. Steve Jr. is going to jump in and, and make and, and explain how the games get worse. Start off good. Sound like a good idea. Oh, Sound uh-huh. like a good mm-hmm. idea. But then mm-hmm. as the game progresses, problems arise. Let's simple game of spades. We're going to play some spades. We're going to set up the table. We're mm-hmm. going to play some spades. Okay. And then, and then everything happens. Somebody start cheap. You know, yeah. you got that problem. Oh, you know, uh, man. <laughs> renege. You know, man, the first time somebody renege, you swear it was a dead body in the room. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you, man. So you, so you can't play that. You know, mm-hmm. people don't know how to lose and, and, and just take it. You know, they, they mm-hmm. take it personal. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, they take it really right. personal. All right, so you're going to go outside play some touch football. Mm-hmm. You know, get the mm-hmm. family, everybody just play some touch football. Okay. Mm-hmm. You got a grown ass man think it's cool to run over a third grader. Just run over his ass. <laughs> 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 just punish him. That ain't cool. Just, <laughs> just, yeah. Just, just punish him, man. <laughs> well, damn, man, we playing football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a kid. No. This is a you child. Know, I mean, uh-huh. all out. You, you ain't ain't. been putting them on me. You know how I am. You put him to check me. You put him to check me. That's what I'm going to do to him. Oh, my God. Damn, yeah. man. What you out here for? You come he to play or you lying. come to play? What? Hey. It, it, it go wrong. It go wrong. All right, here's kid. another. Send him in the right. manual. Send him in the manual. Like, hey, look. Hey, this is all I got to say. Uh-huh. You know, if if you can't you can't handle the heat, get out this kitchen. Get out this Whoa. kitchen. I don't care if you're eight. <laughs> I don't care if you're eight. I don't care. If you're... No, no, no. Let him cry. Let, Let him, him cry. cry. He got to learn. He got to learn. This a man's game. All That's right. cruel. Yeah. Here it is. Here's another game you can't play. Okay. You want to play dominoes, but you got that dude that been he been he been away for a while. Uh huh. And he take this game a little bit. Too serious, he, you know what I mean? He been in the, he been away, you know. He been in the system, he, he been locked up. Oh, so Domino, he been away, Domino's, away. 
Uh, Domino's is a different game than him. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't have been here, man. Now you want to play. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Hold up, dog. Hold up, dog. I just sent you to the yard on them trains. <laughs> what you talking about? Man. Wow. Hold up, dog. You just went to the yard on them trains. You ain't had no trades a minute ago. <laughs> what you talking about? Hold on, I'm talking about, I'm talking about your ass is up in the Oh, you trying to. Oh, you remember I get shanked? <laughs> What's gonna yeah. happen to you, partner? You're out now. <laughs> You're out now, man. Yeah. We don't free. And free. No, no, yeah. no. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna need two packs of cigarettes for that. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, at the holiday party. That's all I'm saying. Okay. And I'm gonna need them right. two packs. Next right, time I see that. you, no <laughs> playing Domino's we, we, in an undershirt. We, we can't play that. We gotta play another yeah, game. All right, yeah, now yeah. we're gonna we're gonna go back outside, try to play just a simple game, family game of mm-hmm. dodgeball. It's the same guy who think it's a lot of fun to hit a third grader no. with a ninety mile an hour ball. He think that's a lot of fun. In the face. <laughs> <laughs> what are you out here playing for? I don't care if you ain't. <laughs> It's Why called dodgeball. It ain't called stand there and get hit. Yeah. But he's eight. Why you oh gotta God. hit him so hard? Hey, what? What he? He ain't, he ain't duck. <laughs> I, I bet All he right. talked now. Oh, All right. okay. Oh, okay. Ain't gonna cock back with that little weak ass throw like I ain't see that coming. Yeah, I hit him in the face. In the face. That's what well, he, he need to you. pay attention. <laughs> yeah. So mean. <laughs> Oh, baby. Right. Oh, baby. Oh, we go back in the house. We decide to play chess. But here's what happens. Mm-hmm. The man who think he know everything about chess get his ass dusted by that eighth grader. Now, he really upset. The little boy done tow his ass up in mm-hmm. chess. Yeah. And he can't take it. Well, all the oh, pieces. That- take the <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the pieces going to be on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> he picked them up. Hold yeah, on, hold on, yeah. dog. Hold up, dog. Uh-huh. You can't say checkmate. We just got started. <laughs> <laughs> how you gonna? How you gonna do? No, 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 no. no we even did but four, five, six moves. What is you talking about, checkmate? He won. No, no, that ain't how chess go. He chess won. a thinking man game. Right. <laughs> you ain't, you ain't even had time to think. David, he, he won. won the game, man. He doesn't. He ain't won no damn you. game. He, he just said you, checkmate. Man. He, yeah, he beat you. He I mean, he won the game. How? Show me how. <laughs> he showed you. He showed you. Yeah, he showed you, man. That ain't, you can't do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, you got to do, look, man, in chess, you have to make a minimum of 20 moves each. <laughs> well, he didn't have to do that. For you can, no, that's how it's done, dog. Are you getting mad? Upset. No, you ain't even supposed to say yeah. checkmate unless it's been 20 moves. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe but, try something else. I don't know. Yeah. Man, see, y'all need to play some chess with white folk. It's <laughs> racial. It's racial. Yeah. Everything is racial with you. <laughs> can't play that? All right, last game. Last uh-huh. game we can't play. Uh-huh. Checkers. Can't Can play, play checkers? checkers? It's the same guy with the dodgeball. Really enjoys beating a third grader. He, he gets such Bam, joy. bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> King. King me. <laughs> what is your punk ass crying for? Put a, put a crown on it. Put the wipe your ass out. No, 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 man. No, 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 man. You can't jump backwards. Because you got the red pizza. Red pizza, red pizza can't jump backwards. It's a child, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, end of this game, okay? Yeah, uh, let's right. move on. All right, more of this crazy, ignorant show. <laughs> Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The stereotype of being single during the holidays usually brings looks of pity from people, but really, it can be cool. It can if you're single. Cool. Uh, what? Being single for the holiday? Yeah. Man, don't let the people fool you. You need to find somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Get booed up. <laughs> don't, 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 I'm telling you. You need to find some damn body. Don't Wake your ass up in the house by you. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Man, wake up on Christmas Day by yourself. <laughs> Ain't no noise in the other room. Well, there are a lot of things, Junior, that single people can do that someone with a significant other can't. Guys, here are ways that singles have it better during the holidays. Check it out, Junior. No fights waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. Someone that's didn't... a good thing. Yeah, that's a great thing. Or breakups. You don't want a lot of people yeah. break up over the holidays. You mm-hmm. don't have to yeah, worry well, about that. Can't, can't break up if you ain't got nobody. Yeah, by right. yourself. Right. Yeah. 
You don't have to buy a lot of gifts. Think about it. I like yeah, it. But Think then you about ain't it. getting none. But you ain't either. getting none either. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking at the bright side of this. Uh, there are no mandatory spouse holiday parties you have to attend. But your ass ain't got nothing on the stove either. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have and, to choose. Ain't no smells in the house. There ain't no smells in the house. <laughs> okay, here's another one. You don't have to choose which family you're going to celebrate with. There's always a fight about that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, but we... you need to find somebody house though. <laughs> and you don't want your family no. Huh? And then here's a good one. New Year's Eve, you can go in focusing all on you. You ever brought in the New Year's by yourself? That's uh-huh. lovely. When yeah, you, when you do, yeah. when you do blow in that horn, uh-huh. don't nobody hear it. <laughs> <laughs> don't nobody hear it. <laughs> Shirley, <laughs> what? the reason What's you these? can focus on just yourself bringing uh-huh. in the New Year. Okay, why? But it, did, you couldn't do that the year before because you still by your <laughs> <answer. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We're looking at the positive side of being single, Steve. Mm-hmm. That's all. No, it's, there's no positive it's, side. No, you don't think so, Junior? You need to find all. somebody. Uh-huh. I remember the first time we moved to Atlanta. Uh-huh. The first Christmas, yeah. I didn't go home when I moved to Atlanta. All right. Yeah. When I woke up and there was nothing, uh-huh. no, no food, no food, no, food, no, no, no nothing. Yeah. Uh-huh. I called home. I heard all that joy and laughter, and getting passed around on the phone ain't fun. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> All these damn questions I'm it's coming junior. with. Who is that? Let me talk to him. Who coming in? <laughs> what y'all doing in there? <laughs> Who is that? Who in there now? <laughs> is that the doll? <laughs> what baby is that? What y'all look at that? You don't want to do that. <laughs> wow. I like all of that. Yeah. <laughs> you like being by yourself. Love it, it, love it, love it. No. You like being by yourself during the holidays, mm-hmm. though, Jay? Yeah, listen. That's what it sounds like. To what? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay, Christmas morning is like what at your house? Listen, let me hear you. Listen. Don't you just love that? <laughs> <laughs> no pots rattling. Listen again. You may be the hit. Woo! In that joint. <laughs> so it got to be lonely. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> it got to be lonely. No pots rattling, no noise, no let laughter. Let me let you hear it again. No company at all. Don't Man. come to my house. You ain't in the neighborhood because I ain't going to let you in. <laughs> You know that? Yeah. I, we were just in the neighborhood. Yeah, well, you outside because you ain't coming in. What is it in your house about your house? Me! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's Christmas time, right? And a lot of people take great pains to find the perfect gift for someone over the holidays because Mm. they want to treat their loved ones to something special. But it turns out that a lot of people aren't necessarily thinking that way. In fact, many are really just looking for ways to out-gift the loved ones in their lives. A new survey finds, yeah, right? A a new survey finds that 61% of Americans see gift giving as a way to out-gift their loved ones. 39% of people say the person they are competing with uh, see see that person as their sibling, usually. I did Um, Mm, other people, tr- <laughs> you did it. Other people uh, try to um, outgift that they try to outgift include friends or significant others. I can see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I gotta ask you guys, what is the worst gift you've ever received, and what's the best gift you've ever received, Jay? Oh, the worst gift I ever received was my mm-hmm. kids, and they got together. All three of them got mm-hmm. together and pitched in on this and gave me. One pair of lime green socks. <laughs> God. That's, lime that's green, gotta hurt. Lime green just started to get a little recognition back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> lime, lime, is just, lime is just starting yeah. to come out. Uh, it, it wasn't right, right, right. You're right. right, right. It, 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 it wasn't worth it, a damn back in the 70s <laughs> and the 80s. Lime, lime walk around like he's bold. I'm like, is that lime? Yeah, I lime, I yeah. <laughs> What about you, Junior? <laughs> oh, my God, the worst gift. You remember back in school when you used to have to trade gifts, you know, buy a gift, bring uh-huh. a gift? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Secret went, Santa or whatever. Yeah, Secret Santa. Santa's, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I went and got this Michael Knight, Knight Rider remote control car. That's the okay. gift I brought. Wow. Uh-huh. You didn't but have the, a When I got my gift, though, limit? back... <laughs> I just had Play-Doh. <laughs> I could not That's understand. Late. What the hell is this? <laughs> and then the little boy said, it can do a lot of stuff. He twisted it and just made a little man. I kicked that little man over. I don't want no damn Play-Doh. <laughs> I want That's my car back is what I want. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. What about you, nephew? <laughs> Mine is a little similar, Junior, because it was at school. It was in grade school. I think it was about fifth grade. And I, I pulled this kid's name, and he pulled my name. So, uh-huh. you know, I done done all my chores. I done cut some yards. I got him the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. I got Fu him grip. a good yeah. toy. Yeah. The Kung Fu. Uh, That's nice. a real nice. toy back in the day. You all didn't have yeah. price limits, huh? Man, <laughs> let me tell you something. Yeah. Let me tell you something. He got me a coloring book that his ass had been coloring <laughs> in. Yeah. I, oh, I put his colored. ass in Miss Johnson's room. You hear me? <laughs> Man. My mama beat the hell out of me that day. <laughs> they call yeah, that at the Mercedes dealership pre-owned. <laughs> you Not you. it all through the book. <laughs> First of all, it's a sorry gift, but you've been coloring in it already. No, it, I'm any all it. outside the lines, too. All outside the lines. <laughs> oh, God. Wow, that's, that's hilarious. Uh, all right. Uh, what's, what's the best that? gift? What's the best uh, gift? Oh, man. Uh, well, I can tell you the best gift I gave my mom because mm-hmm. I always competed against my sister. My sister oh, see? You know, that, so the survey always, is correct. Okay. correct. <laughs> yeah, correct. It's true. I remember one year mm-hmm. my, my sister gave my mom, she said I gave her. Uh, I said, so what'd you give mom? She said, uh, and this is the first time I ever heard my sister curse. She said, I gave mom $100. I said, I gave her uh, a floor model color TV. My sister said, who is a Christian and don't cuss much at all, at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She said, I'll be damned. <laughs> she said, what, Jay? <laughs> I be damned. <laughs> and that's a lot he for her. Won. Aren't <laughs> he won. That's great. What about you, Shirley? Uh, let's see. The worst gift I ever got. Um, I don't know. I guess it was a microphone when I was little. You know, a mi- not little, but younger. But it didn't work. I didn't get any batteries with it. You know, it, it, it was like I'll tell you the worst gift I ever. Yeah, I mean, what you got? A keychain. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm so bad. An older relative gave me that. I want to throw that keychain. Yeah, and then, and then the worst gift of all was, of course, a set of pots. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Coming up next, it is the nephew with a prank phone call right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, guys, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, one big happy family or nothing at all. Mm. Mm. Okay, we'll get into that. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Well, Shirley, Carla, y'all been going through it. You know, what? sometimes when I hear what you're going through, I I use that. What? Today's title is Pop-Up. Pedicure. Oh, oh pop yeah. up. Oh, oh no. Pedicure. I've been doing my own. <laughs> oh, I'm finna be stupid. Y'all check this out. Come on, cat. Hello. Hello. I'm trying to reach Dana, please. Yeah, this is she. What's up? Uh, Dana. Um, I am calling. We're trying to get a um, uh, schedule an appointment with you. Uh, your husband has purchased you a pedicure. Uh, uh, pedicure spa. So we wanted to get see what date, uh, if Saturday would work for you. Um, my husband wanted to book me a pedicure for me. I'm 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 actually good right now. I'm gonna wait until I'm ready. Uh, but thank you <laughs> very much. Uh, but no, this is a this is a uh, this is a pop up pedicure, and what we do okay, is we actually, cool. yeah, we come to your house. Uh, we have gloves and we have masks on, and and you you stick your foot out the door, and we're going to disinfect everything. Your foot, wait, your wait, entire wait, 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 wait. The f- you're talking about putting my foot out the door? You realize, yeah. So just to, just for safety, you, you your stick your. Uh, I'm sorry. My name is Milton with um, uh, Precious Pop Up Pedicure. We do pedicures. We we go around because we know a lot of people can't get out. So you know we're small business. We're just trying to stay afloat right now. So that's. But your husband called in about, you know, he called us. He wanted to get an appointment for you. and But we come to your house, and when you stick your leg out, we'll do the pedicure, and then you stick the other leg out, and we'll do that one. Milton, honey, sweetheart, I know you've seen a lot of feet, and you've done a lot of toes and hands. And let me tell you something. The f- I'm going to put my feet out the window, first of all. You know well, how the, that well, is? Well, whichever is I'm convenient, the window or the I'm door. 
I don't care what it is. If I'm going to get my feet done, I'm going to have my dump, my feet done in a chair inside, and I will be, I'd be out of my head if I put my feet out the window. People don't see my feet out the window. That is crazy. And I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm coming correct as a, as a businesswoman, woman to man, Milton. I suggest you just you you tailor that back in. Maybe you can do some some buy me in advance pedicures and shit like that. But my feet are too fragile and beautiful to be putting out the well, window. Well, well, there, now, there lies the problem, ma'am. Uh, and I, if you don't mind, your your husband, Kelvin, is the one that called, and he's the one that says that your feet look a mess. So that's why okay. we're calling. He's the one that booked the appointment for you. You know what? My feet are f***ing beautiful. And again, Milton, you know... Well, are they, are they beautiful the now since woman. you've been in... I'm sorry. Excuse me. Are you are you the person who should be telling me that? That's on my husband, who I will have a conversation with after this conversation. So I, I, I guess my question is, ma'am, you're saying your feet are beautiful, but are they beautiful now since they you've been locked up for a month or so? I mean, evidently, you? you, you're, evidently your feet are scaring your husband because he's the one calling saying, "Oh my God, I got to get my wife's feet done." My feet are gorgeous, sweetheart. Okay, they're beautiful. They're supple. They're beautiful. They've got a beautiful tone of caramel to them. They shine in the sunshine, whether they're polished or not. My husband will love them, whether they're painted, clipped. Well, I don't think your husband the loves them because he called us. Obviously, Milton, you're not thinking. And I think you need to check with your wife, Wendy. Do you know that? There is no reason you should ever have this conversation with a grown woman about her feet and what her husband says. I don't know you, and I'm trying to be as polite as possible. You will not be stepping into my window. Are you crazy? I'm not going to come in your window. You you just stick your foot out of the window or the door, whichever one is convenient for you, okay? It's it's not that hard. It's going to 15, 20 minutes, and we're done. Oh, no, 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 no. You are not getting business. 15 or 20 minutes. Do you know how much time it takes to get a pedicure done? You know, well, this is well. well we're, we're, man, this is a pop up. This it's a pop up pedicure. Pop the f- we're down. not gonna pop the f- down. Your sh- is gonna be driving through with three wells at this point. I'm not taking that. No, 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 no. And I'm having a conversation with my husband to never call you again. And I do suggest that you have a conversation with Wendy, who I don't know, but I think she would agree with me. Twenty f- minutes is not long enough. And my feet are beautiful, and don't ever call me again and tell me that you think for some reason that. Because my husband told you that they were bad feet or I needed to get a pedicure, that you have the right to tell me that you don't know me. And if you do ever come by my house, I swear to God, I will stick my foot up your ass and don't ever, ever try to bring that up to me again. Don't call my house. Don't well, that, my this, is what Ke- this is what Kelvin told us, ma'am. Okay. Kelvin told me what? You are not supposed to tell a woman that. Like okay. I said, I'm done. I'm okay. Done. But you, do you want do you want to know okay, what else, Kelvin? Do you, do you want to know what I else Kelvin told know. us to do? Do you want to know what else Kelvin told us to do? No, I don't. Okay, okay. But can I just can I just please tell you what else Kelvin told us? I'm gonna give I, you I'm ha- seconds and then I'm I'm hanging up. Okay, this is a moment of truth. Kelvin gave us a call. He gave me a call. Me, nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. He told me <laughs> to prank phone call his wife. No. <laughs> I'm serious. Are you serious? Yo, you know what, sweetheart? You're, you are so on par right now because if this had actually been the truth, I would have been throwing my husband out the f-ing door. Excuse my Frenchiness. First of all, how are, how are you doing? I mean, not that I have you on the phone. Can we have a heart to heart? Because I love you. We can have a heart to heart. How you doing? I'm good. Yeah. How are you doing? Oh How are you doing during this this whole pandemic? How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm you know yeah. my feet are looking good, but I've been listening <laughs> to you on the daily, and Thank I'm so you. happy to hear your voice. I've there we go. Creative. I appreciate it. I've been staying up to beat on everything. You've been putting a smile on my face every day. Uh, um, I feel like there's a new light here now. I so, you know, things know. are great. I love me some Calvin, let me tell you, but I love you too. I appreciate it. Hey, 2020, come on, let the nephew know what's the baddest. And I mean the baddest radio show in the land. There's nothing better than the Seed <laughs> Harbor Morning Show, the baddest radio show in the land. Hey, Seed. <laughs> 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 Well, I'm just trying Ooh. to help. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to help. Everybody's sticking it.
<laughs> she didn't give a damn. Yeah. <laughs> Not she said if you, um, she said if you come by here, I ain't sticking my foot out the door. I'm gonna stick my foot straight up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm keep doing my I own love my own pedicures. <laughs> but she loves the Steve Harvey Morning Show. She oh, said, thank you. Let everybody know, I love y'all. I'm listening every morning, y'all getting us through all of this. So big ups to us. She uh, she loves the show, man. And she gonna get that pedicure sooner or later. But she will not be using the pop up. Pedicure at all. Not and we're at not all. mad at her for that. No. But it sounds like a good business to me, Carl. Pop up just pedicure. Think, just stick your foot out the door. You ain't got to, you ain't got to see me. I ain't got to see you. Put that foot say. out there. Let me. <laughs> uh, coming up, as we mentioned, the strawberry letter is subject, one big happy family or nothing at all. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. If you need advice on relationships, on dating, on work, on sex, on parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. And we could be reading your letter live on the air and helping you out, just like we're going to do for this person right here. Buggle up. Hold on tight. We got it for you. <laughs> Strawberry letter. <laughs> all right. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> at all. All right, subject, one big happy family or nothing at all. Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been dating a man for three years, and we get along great. We've talked about getting married, but we have to work out a few kinks first. Both of us have teenage kids from previous relationships, and I spend a lot of time with his kids every other weekend. He is always around my kids because I have sole custody of them. We always joke about how his kids like hanging out with me more than him. If I am doing something for my kids, I include his kids. I buy them gifts for birthdays, Christmas, or just because. I buy them gifts, and uh, there's no separation to me. But over the weekend, I had the strangest conversation with my boyfriend about the kids. He told me that this Christmas, he plans to focus more on his kids and spend quality time with them alone during the holidays. I was shocked to hear this. Over the years, he's been good to my kids, but I do see a difference in how he treats them and how he treats his own kids. My kids love him, so I never make a big deal out of it. The fact that he is trying to make a big distinction between the kids really hurts my feelings. Blended families are tricky, and we've been trying to make it work, but this was a harsh reality check. My kids come first, but I'm able to love his kids as my own. Now I have doubts about marriage. Am I overthinking this? Stephen Shirley, what do you think? Mm. No, you are not overthinking anything. I say go with what you see and what you know. Because when people show you and, in this case, tell you who they are, please believe them. I mean, okay, let's look at the facts. This man that you've been with for three years told you that this Christmas he just wants to spend quality time with his kids alone during the holidays. Hmm, what else do you need to hear? It's the holidays. That's the time when you and your man and the kids, you know, you guys are supposed to spend family time together, not apart. Uh, So, again, what else is it that you need to hear? I mean, he doesn't want to be with you, and he doesn't want to be with you and your kids for Christmas, okay? In In this relationship, you are all in. You are just everything in this relationship. You have accepted his teenage kids. You spend a lot of time with them. You remember their birthdays and other special occasions. You buy them gifts and stuff. He, on the other hand, makes a difference between his kids and your kids. And you're right. In in order for a blended family to work, you have to show love to everyone, even if in your heart you love your own kids more. And I think that's pretty normal to feel that way. You have a special bond with your kids. You carry them and all of that. But, um, you know, you're fair and loving loving on the outside, but your man is not doing that and he's not trying to hide it even though you say your kids love him and you haven't made a big deal out of it. It is a big deal because uh, he sounds like he has checked out of this relationship and on his way out of this relationship. Someone who's thinking of marriage, uh, of marrying you, would not want to be without you on this Christmas, okay? Sounds like he's going to be with someone else. Steve? Well, Shirley... 
I have to agree with you. So here we go. This lady been dating this man for three years. Everything going great. Talked about getting married. But they need to work out some kinks. You know, both of them got kids. He spends a lot of time in them. He's always around the kids because uh, she got sole custody of them. And we joke about how his kids like hanging out with me more than him. And then, you know, if I'm doing something for my kids, I include his kids. I buy them gifts for birthdays, Christmas, everything. No separation to me. But over the weekend, we had a little conversation with my boyfriend about the kids. He told me, he said, this Christmas, he planning on focusing more on his kids. Spend quality time with them alone during the holidays. I was shocked to hear that. Over the years, he's been good to my kids, but I do see a difference in how he treats them and how he treats his own kids. My kids love him, so I never made a big deal out of it. The fact that he's trying to make a big distinction between the kids really hurt my feelings. Blended families are tricky. Yes, they are. And I've been trying to make it work, but this is a harsh reality check. My kids come first, but I'm able to love his kids as my own. Now I have doubts about marriage. I'm overthinking this. I think you all got to sit down and have a conversation. Something is happening where he's feeling like he's obviously not paying close enough attention to his own kids. So he decided this year he going to spend time with his kids alone. Somebody that said something to him. He didn't come to this conclusion on his own. Mm. Somebody said something to him. What do you mean, Steve? Somebody said, you know what? The kids feel like you just treat everybody better than them. They oh. come over there and they feel like your stepchildren. Mm-hmm. Somebody oh, fed this that? information okay. mm. to him or one of the kids said something to him. That's the only reason for he to suddenly go like this. So he's trying to prove that that's not true. So he going to be spending a lot of time with just his kids alone. On Christmas? And he's been with her for three years? Wow. Yeah, I don't know how he think that's going to work. Yeah. He, he, better not lay, he better not say that to nobody and then lay down. He finna mess them kids up. And then lay down. He, he can't go to sleep in that house. <laughs> he can't make that statement and then go get in the no, bed. and start snowing. <laughs> no, you, that's been to be in the temp on your life. And you probably need to wake up. <laughs> But that was kind of cold, though. I mean, yeah, yeah. It was. he plans to focus more on his kids and spend quality time with them alone during the holidays. Partner, that ain't how this works. No. And you said this out loud, too. All right, Steve, well, hang on. Part two of your answer is coming up. Um, we'll take a short break here and come back at 23 after the hour. Subject, one big happy family or nothing at all. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve. Uh... <laughs> this letter is crazy. Let's recap subject one big happy family or nothing at all. Well, it look like nothing at all because he wants to spend this holiday with his kids. Mm-hmm. Spend more time with his kids alone. <laughs> That's crazy. Tired of making your kids have happy Christmases. And my kids is over here with their lips stuck out. <laughs> now, we're not going to do that this year. <laughs> now, Cheryl, I want you to be the wife asking me, why we can't have this Christmas together. And you're going to be repeatedly keep asking me about this Christmas, and I'm going to keep giving you different reasons. Okay. Well, honey, uh, I'm so happy the holidays are here. I can't wait to spend Christmas with you. I wish I could say the same. (laughs) Well, what do you mean? We are spending it together, aren't we? Well, you know, we're going to spend it together, but it's going to be separate. But separate is not together, honey. We're going to spend Christmas together, right? You, me, and the kids. Hey, look, you need to keep saying the word together. Toge- I'm just telling you. <laughs> right, we're going to spend it together, we right? Gonna, we're going to be together, but it's going to be separate. I want to spend it together. You know, you, me, the kids, us. Well, hold family. on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what key is you talking about? I'm mm. talking about our kids, my kids and your kids. No, well, no, no, together. no. See, your kids is your kids. My kids, me and my kids, going to spend this holiday together and alone. But, honey, we're we're together. You know, we're, we've are we been dating for three years now. See, and... all this, all this important to you. Yes, and I thought it was oh, important to you that we be together. But not like this, though. You talking about all the time? <laughs> I'm talking about during the holidays. Yes, honey, I... I've planned stuff, I've cooked, I've invited people over, all of that. You know, one big happy family. Well, I don't, you know, baby, damn. You know, you don't ask me nothing. Well, we've we've been together for three years. It's kind of a given that we spend the holidays together. 
Yeah, but you ain't you ain't like did nothing special for the holidays. I've been out here lining people up so we can make our move. Make our move? I thought we were gonna just be together. I we put the Christmas tree up and did the decorations and everything. Who all helped put the Christmas tree up? Just, just, just let me ask you this here. The kids. Ain't nobody help but the tall kids. <laughs> you don't know their name. Oh, <laughs> Got to be by some Because the little ass kid couldn't help out. Excuse- so there ain't nobody help but the tall kid. Excuse me, aside. There's an aside, uh, honey. Uh, what did you say, nephew? It's always about height, though. <laughs> With Even him? in the letter, it's about height. Just, but go on. He don't know uh, their names, though. Yeah. The they just did, but the shop kids, is, what is they doing? <laughs> I don't know what the shop kids. They put all the ornaments on the bottom of the tree, and they put the skirt around it. And they waters it. The shark kids water it. We got plenty for shark people to do around here. Now. Somebody got to plug it up every night. Yeah, that way you ain't got to bend over. You, for you it ain't nothing. Shark work ain't nothing for you. Well, honey, and the tree looks so beautiful. I'm so grateful. And I just wanted to spend it together. You know, you, me. Yeah. The, us together and the Gotta kids. Gotta hang these balls on the bottom of that tree, too. <laughs> I like I like tree balls at the bottom of the tree. Okay. Yeah. Ornaments? Yes. Yeah, them ornaments. But the balls, though. <laughs> I don't like Christmas ornaments. There's others. You know, acorn, Christmas tree, yeah. candy cane. Acorn. I just like balls. Pine cones on it, dog. I don't like all that. Little angels don't look like an angel. Ugly, all them ugly well, figurines. What about the lights? That makes the tree look so pretty. Oh, the lights? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to have yeah. lights. That ornament you well, made at school and brought home. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what's on the tree. It's just as long as we're together, honey. And I want to be together for this Christmas. Well, baby, that ain't that ain't what we finna do no more. Well, why not? I mean, what, what's the problem? No, see, you know, you're just trying to make this something else. I'm trying to make this something else. I done told you. Hey, who you hollering at? Don't holler. Don't See, yell. that's why we don't I'm need to right be together. I'm right here. You Christmas. don't need to yell at me. Well, obviously, okay? you can't hear don't good. Tr- I can hear just fine. See, okay? that's why I want to I be just alone can now. hear just fine. Well, you can be by yourself, but we're going to be there. How about that? That's alone, and then we're going to be you there. You can just come up in here, and I don't want come you. On. It's you. my house, too. Yes, clap back. <laughs> Okay. What are you talking about? It's your house. I don't pay the mortgage and never will, but it's my house. Oh, I don't know who told you that. You, you, I told myself that when we when we first started living together. Oh well, I'm gonna have to get a restraining order on you. <laughs> what? Oh, okay. that works both what? ways. I can get one on you too, you know. But oh, we're gonna be together. So this ain't California. This California. <laughs> Oh, you trying to do me? Oh. We're going to be together whether oh, you, you want I'm to be Cliff. or not. Cliff. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what? What? You do you and I'm going to do you. And no. then we'll probably have the best Christmas we ever had. No, I don't think so, honey. I, well, it's I not going to go down like that. Do, baby, We've I'm been sorry. together for three years. We've always spent That's Christmas all. together. We're going to be together this Christmas, whether baby, you like it or not. Well, baby, I'm if cooking, we do, I've I'm invited... you, well, you can cook and invite whoever you want. We ain't going to make it to folks. <laughs> That's just wrong. It's over, man. We ain't going to make it to Well, folk. do you have someone else? Do I have someone you else? You heard me. Because why wouldn't you want to spend it with me? You've been spending Christmas with me. All of a sudden. Oh, so you want four Christmases in a row? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there we go. There we go. (laughs) Oh, no. Consistently? (laughs) Man. Mm -hmm. We'll be together. Mm -hmm. We're going to be together. (laughs) <laughs> Irregardless. Uh, <laughs> all right, today's strawberry letter. We got to get out of here, Steve. You just a gangsta ass. Chick. That's right. If you need advice on relationships and work and sex and all that, just go to Steve Harvey FM. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, time for a comedy roulette. Uh, today's categories are things you say to people to help you move. Lies mm-hmm. men tell to get out of the house. <coughs> Lies Only women looking. tell to get out of the house. Ooh, mm-hmm. either one. Uh-huh. And lastly, <laughs> stuff white people say to black people that they think is really cool. All right? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Let's spin the okay. wheel. Spun it. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
Okay. Mm, come on, come on, come on. Men oh. getting out the house. Come on, live. Yeah. Women. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> it stopped at stuff white people say to black people that they think is really cool. Let's let's get oh. right into it. Let's get right come into on. it. All right, Jay. here we go. Oh, we just sliced up a whole lot of watermelon. I'm sure you like it. I'm <laughs> oh, sure you like it. That's <laughs> whooping. Come on, Junior. <laughs> so, um, do all of you all know the hip hop thing? <laughs> wow. All y'all know hip hop, don't you? Things white people say to black people that they think is really cool. Yeah. Okay. Man, I really want my I really want my lips to look like yours. <laughs> really do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Come on, Steve. Hey, Piggy wasn't small at all. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff white people say to black people that they think is really cool. I don't really mean to be out of line, but could I just touch your ass? Just touch it, that's all. (laughs) What? (laughs) What? (laughs) So foul. (laughs) So let me ask you something. I don't really know you guys that well, but do you all have chicken farms? (laughs) Chicken farms? (laughs) Hey, dude, listen, if you ever really want it, you know, I can teach you how to swim. (laughs) <laughs> oh, <laughs> <I love it. laughs> That's white people say to black people that they think yeah, they it's think really it's cool. cool. Yeah. Right, right, right. Hey, I'll tell you, this first lady doesn't compare to yours. <laughs> oh. Okay. Oh, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That was a deep one. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So let me get this right. You went to college, but not on a basketball scholarship? Oh. Really? Oh. Really? Oh. Wow. <laughs> All right, Steve. Close, Close it out, Steve. Cool. Hey, who's the daddy? Yeah. yeah. I'll just tell you. I'm perfectly fine with another African-American president. <laughs> Perfectly fine. <Right>. Yeah. <laughs> Not in this life. I didn't have a problem with the one we had. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. All right. More of this crazy, ignorant show. <laughs> Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. According to new research, one in five Americans are planning on giving someone a take the hint gift this year. A new survey of 2,000 Americans found that hint gifts are a pretty common practice, with one in three respondents saying uh, they've given at least one in the past year or so, or in the past period. And uh, who is the person in our life most likely to give us one of these hint gifts? Well, research shows it's our own partner. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So when Carl and Gil Tosh yeah. these running shoes. Oh my shoes, God! What is that? What that, that say? <laughs> he asked for running shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what though, Carla? I think it's cool yes. though, cause dudes we different. You know, if that's what we want, then I think it's cool. Uh-huh. You know. Yeah, I mean, Tosh is real cool. You know, he's real laid back. He's out begging me some running shoes and, uh-huh. you know, get in here and do your wifely duties. He'll say something like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. Yeah. yeah and, and Nestor I'll wear the asked, shoes to that. Yeah, yeah. He'll say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nestor asked for hey, the Carl, dinner coming there with some heels on, with them shoes yeah. around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Tied at the shoe strings. <laughs> Bring them over with them shoes around your neck, like like in the hood when you just see them suit shoes hanging over the over the telephone yep. wire. Yeah, oh, over, over the line. That's it. Yeah. yeah. And I did oh, want to. Nessio did ask for the dinner jacket, but I didn't know that it was attached to dinner, like Junior said off the air. He yeah. did. He did. Well, at least he know he was going to eat. Oh man. <laughs> It was strategic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he put that jacket on. He started smiling. <laughs> he yeah. really did. He asked Man? me to take a picture of him yeah. and everything. Is it today? <laughs> a decent meal. Oh. <laughs> he do love me. Oh, okay. Hmm. Take a hint gifts, huh? Yeah. Surely you had to he bring He might that get up, some huh? running shoes, too. Okay, the most popular hint <laughs> gift. <laughs> most popular hint <laughs> gift Americans give is deodorant. What? Or what? perfume. Who do that? Or cologne. Yeah. Self help books. Ooh, are, I uh, got well, your funk not... ass something this year. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's more than take a hint. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, the most popular, most popular gift is uh, self-help books. They scored real high. Also on the okay. list were cookbooks. Hey, you well, there you go, sir. Did you get it? <laughs> no, I did not. You're going to get one this year. <laughs> <laughs> exercise equipment, Carla. Exercise equipment. Ah! <laughs> Peloton bike. <laughs> I know. Razors, toothpaste, cleaning supplies, and even breath mints. Yeah. Wow. I just bought, I just wow. bought my wife the Peloton bike. Uh-huh. I just okay. So she, bike. she asked for the bike, though. She wasn't offended by you getting it, right? Oh. Why didn't you save that for Christmas? Oh, this wasn't for Christmas. Oh, oh, this is just a... Man, you, he can't get off that easy. But she asked yeah, for yeah. you to get the bike. Pel- <laughs> Wait a minute. Save <laughs> the Peloton bike for Christmas? Okay, well, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Different incomes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold on. Different way, coins. Way yes. different. coins the on. bracket yes. is different. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, so Steve and, and uh, Junior and Tommy, if you guys had to give someone a take a hint gift, uh, who would it be and what would it be? I guess my sister I getting think... every job application pamphlet I can find. <laughs> ooh, ooh, from ooh, where else? Just got real. <laughs> Since she can't talk about they can't find the work, I see now hiring every damn well. <laughs> yeah. I think we just, oh my God. I think we just saw the best take a hint gift. If I pick you up to go shopping and I put your ass in the back seat because my I got another fine chick in the front, that's about a bigger hit gift you can get. Oh. Oh, from, oh, from the the strawberry letter. 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 Uh-huh. Strawberry letter last mm-hmm. break. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Nat? Mm. My auntie. Uh-huh. Is she listening? I don't think she's listening. Hurry. But a nice perm box. A nice perm Can box. Can't be telling people how to remember. It's a hand. hint, damn it. Uh-uh. It's a hint. <laughs> Let this sit for at least 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, look. Everybody up. can't wear natural hair. Everybody can't do that. <laughs> more foolishness. Some people need something that they can. I'm sorry. More ignorant, more shenanigans coming up at 20 minutes after the hour on the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You ain't doing no wash and sit. You need a firm. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Staying at home this holiday season. Well, lots of people are doing it to ensure the health of their loved ones, but this is somewhat forced staycation, uh, maybe a blessing in disguise after a tough year. I mean, why not relax? Why not unwind and enjoy your time off? Either by yourself or with your immediate family close by, you know, your your bubble people, as I like to call them. The people in your right, own right. bubble, you know what I mean? Uh, not sure what to do, what to do with it yourself? Um, here's some ideas to help you appreciate staying at home for the holidays. Check it out, Carla. We talk about this all the time. Catch up on movies that you want to see. Okay, TV I can do shows, that. yeah, TV That's shows, easy. movies, uh, mm-hmm. all of that. Okay, mm-hmm. take long hot baths, light a few candles, bring in your beverage of choice, a book, play some, you know, sexy music, some soothing music in the background. I like and, it. Red yeah. wine, girl. I like yes, it. I like yes. it. Yeah. And, and you know what? Doctor's orders. Doctor's orders. My doctor okay. told me I need more red wine for my blood. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, and then you can. Clean, you know, clear out some space in your closet or something. It's not fun, but it could be therapeutic. You know what it is for some yeah, people. Yeah, getting organized. That could be uh-huh. a resolution of yours, too, for 2021. I like those suggestions, Shirley. Yeah. Staycation. Mm-hmm, Movies, mm-hmm. baths, clear out some of your space. I'm probably not going to do the, the clear out the space one. I'm probably not going to do that. <laughs> and it says bake. Warm up the kitchen with a batch of homemade Christmas cookies. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know you're not doing more, that. <laughs> more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. The stereotype of being single during the holidays usually brings looks of pity from people. But really, it can be cool. It can if you're single. Who? Uh, what? Being single for the holiday? Yeah. Man, don't let the people fool you. You need to find somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Get booed up. <laughs> don't, 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 I'm telling you. You need to find some damn don't body. Wake them, your ass up in the house you. by yourself. <laughs> yeah. Man, wake up on Christmas Day by yourself. <laughs> Ain't no noise in the other room. Well, there are a lot of things, Junior, that single people can do that someone with a significant other can't. Guys, here are ways that singles have it better during the holidays. Check it out, Junior. No fights waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. Someone that's didn't... a good thing. Yeah, that's a great thing. Or breakups. You don't want a lot of people yeah. break up over the holidays. You don't have to worry yeah, well, about that. 
You can't, yeah. can't break up if you ain't got nobody. Yeah, by right. yourself. Right. Yeah. You don't have to buy a lot of gifts. Think about it. I like yeah, that. But Think then you ain't it. getting none But you ain't either. getting none either. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking at the bright side of this. Uh, there are no mandatory spouse holiday parties you have to attend. But your ass ain't got nothing on the stove either. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have and, to choose. And no smells in the house. There ain't no smells <laughs> in the house. Okay, here's another one. You don't have to choose which family you're going to celebrate with. Mm-hmm. There's always a fight about that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, you, but we... you need to find somebody house, though. <laughs> and you don't want your family to know her. And then here's a good one. New Year's Eve, you can go in focusing all on you. You yeah. ever brought in the New Year's by yourself? That's uh-huh. lovely. When yeah, you, when you do, single, yeah. when you do blow in that horn, uh-huh. don't nobody hear it. <laughs> <laughs> don't nobody hear it. <laughs> Shirley, <laughs> what? the reason what, you can focus on just yourself bringing uh-huh. in the New Year. Okay, why? But it, did, you couldn't do that the year before because you still buy your damn <laughs> 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 Yeah. We're looking at the positive side of being single, Steve. Mm-hmm. That's all. No, it's, there's no positive it's, side. No, you don't think so, Junior? You need to find all. somebody. Uh-huh. I remember the first time we moved to Atlanta. Uh-huh. The first Christmas, yeah. I didn't go home when I moved to Atlanta. All right. Yeah. When I woke up and there was nothing, uh-huh. no, nothing food, no food, no food, no, no nothing. Yeah. Uh-huh. I called home. I heard all that joy and laughter, and getting passed around on the phone ain't fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? All these damn questions I'm it's coming junior. with. Who is that? Let me talk to him. Who coming in? <laughs> what y'all doing in there? <laughs> Who is that? Who in there now? <laughs> is that the dough? <laughs> what baby is that? What y'all look at that? You don't want to do that. <laughs> wow. I like all of that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you like being by yourself? Love, you it, come it, to love it. Love it. Love no. it. You like being by yourself during the holidays, mm-hmm. though, Jay? Yeah. Listen. That's what it sounds like. To what? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay, Christmas morning is like what at your house? Listen, let me hear. Listen. Woo! In that joint. <laughs> they gotta be lonely. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> got to be lonely. No pots rattling, no noise, no let laughter. Let me let you hear it again. No company at all. Don't Man. come to my house. You ain't in the neighborhood because I ain't gonna let you in. <laughs> you know that? Yeah. I, we was just in the neighborhood. Yeah, well, you outside because you ain't coming in. <laughs> What is it in your house about your house? Me! (laughs) (laughs) All right, coming up, it's Steve Harvey and his closing remarks. You don't want to miss it at 49 after the hour. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are, guys, with the last break of the day on this Monday. It is the last break of the day. Yes, it is. No more breaks. <laughs> say it right, Jay. No, no. I mean, you know I said it like once, but I miss people. Wait, wait. It's gonna be another break. No, there will be no more damn breaks. Okay, <laughs> this is the last damn one. <laughs> sure, there ain't gonna be it. another break. No, it's no. The one. That's it. That's it, man. <laughs> it's been a good Monday, though. Yes, it is. Uh, yes, it it is. really has. Yeah, oh, it's great Monday. Mm-hmm. It has. Great to be back. Congratulations, great to, big yes. dog. Yes, welcome back. Welcome, welcome back, back junior. junior. You know, you know, you know what, Shirley? You know what mm-hmm. I thought about though? What? I th- and I looked at the whole show. I missed you guys, but I thought about something. What? Do you know Uncle Steve is the Moses of sick people? What do you mean? He leading a bunch of sick people. He leading y'all too. Ooh. Oh, you no, just got no, back from all, Everybody, everybody, from everybody on this show got a problem. It ain't just me and Jay. Everybody got a problem. Well, y'all, Uncle y'all, Steve lead, he lead, he lead <laughs> people with big eyes. Out, he <laughs> lead people with short. He lead bipolar people, Carla, <laughs> Jay diabetic. I got sick. He lead a bunch of sick people. Is what he do. Big eyes is not a not disease. That's sick to No, it is not. Big, yeah, big eyes, eyes is a disease, though. Shirley. I'm going to go. No, it is not. Yeah. Yeah, it's the beginning of something. I do not have the a only reason your problem. eyes is out that far is due to some type of pressure. Early, really, have you always had them open that wide? <laughs> My <laughs> eyes have been big uh, since I came from the womb. Okay, uh, am I right? Uh, am I right? Yeah. Oh, oh, Shut yeah. up, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> All of us people on the show sick. You no, need everybody. You're the only healthy person we got. Oh, no, that's not true. <laughs> Surely, okay. them eyes is the problem. His mind, his mind is gone, Junior, so he can't come. <laughs> <laughs> the better to yeah. see you, my yeah. dear. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. You know, the, uh, the other day yeah, I ahead. was talking about finding the motivation to never give up. Uh, because it's such an important thing, man. Just the, the the fact that you don't quit, that you don't give up on your visions, your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. And you have to find the motivation to do it. But you also have to remember 
that doing good is the right thing to do. And a lot of times I know, man, you get tired of doing good because it seems like there's no payoff. There's a scripture I was reading the other day. Uh, Galatians 6, 9. And it was saying uh, for us to not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. And that's such an important thing, man, because sometimes it's hard to keep doing the right thing, especially when you're being done wrong. It's hard to keep doing the right thing and you don't see the payoff right after you do the right thing. It's hard to do the right thing when everybody else seems to be getting away with something wrong. So it makes it hard to continue to do the right thing. But you have to have the faith that you're doing the right thing. And you can't become weary in doing good. Because like the Bible says, at the proper time, you're going to reap a harvest if you don't give up. Do you understand how true that statement is? That's a promise of God that if you don't get tired and stop doing what's good, that eventually you're going to reap a harvest by just not giving up. There is a benefit to doing what's good. There is a reward for doing things that's good. You don't know, you have no idea how many seeds you're planting when you do something good. You have to you don't even know where they're going to crop up, pop up, where you're going to harvest them later. It may not be even in the same field you planted. I was uh, somewhere one day, and I was going down the street, and a girl had a flat tire, a young girl. And I just thought of one of my daughters, man. So I stopped. I just happened to be driving that day. It was years ago in L.A., and I stopped. And I uh, helped this little girl. And she was on the side of the road just crying. She had a flat tire. She didn't know what to do. And so I stood there, made a phone call, got a tow truck to come. She didn't have the money. I kind of somehow got it to the tire station. I bought the new tires for her. Boom. Fixed her up. She went home. She called her father. She said, Steve Harvey bought me tires for my car. I ain't think nothing of it. The brother thanked me. Years later, I was on a golf course. Years later. I'm talking about like five, six years ago, and this happened like early, like in 2000. So probably around 2015, 16, something like that. I'm playing golf, and this guy comes up to me, and he tells me the story about this girl, and it was his daughter, and he just told me about it. And he hugged me, he said, man, I, I wanted to thank you, I talked to you on the phone, but man, we finally meet me, I was hoping I would see you at this tournament. And so he hugged me. And, you know, didn't think nothing of it. Next thing you know, come to find out, he worked for a high-level company. The company calls me, and the company wants me to do a deal with them. I signed and did the deal with the company. It was all because one day I stopped, and I helped a girl that I just saw in distress. Because I just thought, man, this could be one of my daughters on the side of this road. And she told her father, and her father did a deal with me that turned out to be a very, very beneficial deal. You can't ever get tired of doing what's right because in due time, you will reap a harvest if you never give up. That's a promise from God. Keep doing the right thing, y'all. You will benefit from it. Those are my closing remarks. That's it. That's a wrap. Y'all have a great weekend, okay? And tell your mama near my said, hey. Mm. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 